every single time I spend time doing this instead of doing that, whatever that is, I'm I'm building something that didn't exist before. Do you understand? Because I could easily, if I didn't believe in myself and I didn't see the power of the economic God inside of me, um, I could be over at J.P. Morgan and building bricks, adding bricks to J.P. Morgan. I could be working at Chase Bank or something, right? I have plenty of students that went to Wall Street and they're making lots of money on Wall Street. Those are those are things that that I, I could be doing. But instead, I said, no, you know, I think I should be doing something that doesn't exist because we really need something that's going to be deeply connected and deeply rooted in the specific economic challenges that are faced with the black community. See, what you got to understand, this is why um, this is why the politicians, I guess, don't they, they consider me to be somewhat dangerous, but I don't think I'm dangerous. I think I'm a nice guy. It is that uh, when you're talking about that word specific, specific to the black community, the black community has specific economic problems that specifically were thrust upon you specifically because you were specifically who you were. You were specifically black. They didn't do it to the Italians. They didn't do it to Jewish people. They didn't do it to Irish people. They didn't do it to Asian people. They didn't do it to immigrants. They did it specifically to you. And this specific damage that was specifically done specifically to you over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years is absolutely positively 100% going to require very specific energy applied by our best and brightest who specifically want to solve this specific problem. Do you understand? So that word specific is really important because if you don't if you don't if you don't use that term when thinking about what you want to do as it pertains to black economics and black wealth and all that, then you're going to completely miss it. You're going to miss it. You're literally trying to do surgery with a toothbrush. You know, you, you've got a person that's got cancer and you're trying to give them an aspirin and aspirin isn't going to work. So these politicians, they offer us aspirin because maybe the aspirin in, or maybe they get us addicted to painkillers. That's what it is. It's, it's an addiction to painkillers. So uh, they say you, you're in pain. Let me remind you of how much pain you're in. Let me reiterate to you that I understand the pain that you're in. Here's a painkiller. Right. So. So we take the painkiller every every election. We take the painkiller, and because because you you can't draw a, 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 any sort of track record to show that the specific issue of black wealth uh, destruction and black wealth decline has ever been addressed or fixed. It hasn't been fixed. You're dead last when it comes to wealth in 2024. You were dead last in wealth when back in 2014. You were dead last in wealth in 2004. You were dead last in wealth in 1994. You were dead last in wealth in 1984. You were dead last in wealth in 1974. And I guarantee you that if you go back and listen to the transcripts of politicians in 1974, 1984, 1994, 2004, 2014, every single time they were offering you a painkiller. They were offering you some OxyContin or maybe some fentanyl. And basically, and we, and we it was fentanyl for everybody. And we took the drug and we said, I feel a little bit better temporarily. But ultimately, the fundamental underlying problem was still there. You just had a little bit of a painkiller because maybe you got excited because your guy got elected as president. And maybe in this case, it might be your woman because we, we've got a woman running for president. And I think that's fine. For, that's good for the country, right? Because I think we should have more warm women leaders in anyway. So, so the point is to say, what are we trying to do? What, what are we doing here? What are we spending our energy on? You know, and, and th this to me is also a, um, a conversation about self-esteem. It's, it's self-esteem is self-worth. A person who doesn't have high self-esteem will pretty much do whatever they'll integrate themselves into whatever will accept them Where, wherever they can be, whatever group of friends will have them. They'll, they'll integrate into that because they feel like no one likes them anyway. So they're just happy to have friends. Right. I don't need friends. I don't want I don't care about having friends. I want to have the right friends. I'm OK with being with me. I like me. I like boys. Um, I'm OK with being with my family. I like my wife. I